The subcellular location of specific proteins is critical for their function. So classic examples for these are signaling receptors as they are required to be on the cell surface for them to recognize extracellular signals. Activation of signaling receptors typically leads to their internalization by endocytosis, after which they are transported to the endosome. In the endosome, they are sorted in a sequence-dependent manner into either the recycling pathway, which puts the receptors back on the surface, or to the degradation pathway, which transports them into the lysosome. This sorting is a key determinant in the functional consequences of receptor endocytosis. It determines whether the cell gets resensitized to signals or if the cell stays desensitized for longer periods. In the early 1990s, it was observed that the bulk of endosomal membrane recycled via narrow tubules with very little volume. This provided an elegant method of geometric sorting by which nutrient receptors could constitutively recycle to the plasma membrane but leave their soluble contents behind. However, this did not explain the sorting of signaling receptors. Several of them, such as the delta opioid receptor, did not recycle, even though they were in the endosomal membrane. This is because they get packed into vesicles that bud off into the interior of the endosome. This essentially converts them into the fluid phase. The machinery for this process has been identified and well characterized. What is not known is how other very similar receptors, such as the beta-2 adrenal receptor, is recycled. It is not through bulk recycling because it requires a specific sequence on its C-terminus to recycle. Using live cell confocal microscopy, we were able to visualize individual sorting events as they occurred in the endosome. As seen in this example endosome, the recycling beta-2 adrenal receptor was sorted into endosomal tubules. These tubules are devoid of the non-recycling delta opioid receptor and eventually pinch off vesicles that deliver receptors back to the cell surface. Remarkably, each endosome contains multiple tubules and only a subset of these mediate the recycling of signaling receptors. So this was striking as this indicated that sequence-dependent recycling was mediated by a separate, physically separate subset of tubules that was distinct from the ones that mediate geometric sorting. Such diversity in these pathways begged the question, what was so special about these tubules that mediated sequence-dependent recycling? We observed that a dynamic actin cytoskeleton was specifically localized on this subset of tubules. This actin machinery stabilizes this subset of endosomal tubules. This allows these tubules to last several times longer than the bulk recycling tubules before they are disassociated from the endosome. Further, we observed that the motility of adrenoreceptors on the endosome was much slower than that of the bulk recycling receptors. The actin cytoskeleton, by retaining the subset of tubules for a longer period of time, compensates for this slow motility and allows for the adrenoreceptors to move into these tubules. The transient tubules disassociate too quickly for these receptors to diffuse into them, while the bulk recycling receptors can enter these tubules due to their rapid mobility. Once the receptors entered the tubules, they were concentrated by the interactions of their tail domains with the actin cytoskeleton. Indeed, simply replacing the tail of the receptors with an independent actin binding domain was sufficient for concentration in these tubules and for recycling. Such a simple kinetic mechanism, by segregating cargo into different pathways, can provide virtually unlimited selective control over trafficking pathways, even though they share common sets of, of core trafficking machineries.